with thelandofisrael.com and israelnationalnews.com present Ari Abramowitz and Jeremy Gimpel. Live from the heart of Israel, it's Tuesday Night Live in Jerusalem. And welcome to Tuesday Night Live in Jerusalem. I'm Jeremy Gimpel. This here is Ari Abramowitz. Did you just curtsy? I did curtsy. I do it every time, but that was Jewish a serious men act. should not curtsy. Machloikis. It's good. <laughs> it's good to be home. We just got back from Florida filming our first show on our 2011 tour. It was a phenomenal success. Baruch Hashem. And before we got there, we had the opportunity of speaking to communities all across Southern Florida. JCCs, shoals of all different sorts, high schools, day schools, century villages. Has anyone here ever spoken to a century village and then immediately a Jewish high school? Someone should do a study. Someone should do a study. But the truth is, in the middle of the trip, it dawned on me. And by the time I spoke to the last high school, I asked them, I said, well, do you all have any Israel events? And they said, sure. And I said, well, do you mind if I list them off? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, did you hear about the forest fire? And they said, of course, the forest fire was just a few months ago. We had a special gathering in our, in our school, the largest forest fire ever. And I said, well, what about Gilad Shalit? They said, Gilad Shalit, we have a, a, a chair in our shul inside the school. No one sits in it to remember Gilad Shalit. And I said, well, what about the victims of terror? They said, once a year, a family from the, uh, a, a victim comes and speaks to us about the tragedy. And I said, well, what about Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaShoah? Oh, my goodness. Once a year, we have this special. And I said, do you guys notice a common thread between all of your Israel activities? And they said, no, you've pretty much listed all of our Israel activities. And I said, all of them are disasters. All of them are tragic. Now, if we don't show the next generation the other side of Israel, if the community is always being mobilized for a disaster or a tragedy, a Lebanon war, a flotilla, if our only association with Israel is always negative, we're going to lose our generation. You know, people are concerned about the BBC and the CNN. Mister, are you listening to me? Don't be concerned about BBC. They've always been anti-Israel. They'll always be anti-Israel. If Mashiach came tomorrow, they would be anti-Israel. You can see, oh, well, Lindy, I thought he'd be a little bit taller. You know, no matter what, they're always going to be anti-Israel. But we owe it. <laughs> we owe it not to the anti-Semites and the anti-Zionists. We owe it to the Jewish people. We owe it to the lovers of Israel around the world, good people that believe in God, that live by the same values that we live, good people that haven't lost their moral compass yet. We have to show them the real Israel. And tonight and for the next month, we hope to show the other side of Israel, a new face to Judaism, and a new vision of Yehuda and Shomron, or what the media would call the West Bank. Now, the purpose of TNO, if it's to show the world the beauty and inspiration that is Israel, one could ask, why start your entire season with a program about the settlements? Now, if you ask me, which is what I'm doing right now, the answer is very simple. We wanted to start this season by putting our best foot forwards. That's the settlements. Now, you know, I'm, I'm a sensitive guy. Uh, I, I'm sort of a big teddy bear. You know, you, you poke me, I go, hmm. <laughs> you know, Jeremy makes me cry all the time. I'm very sensitive <laughs> to energies. And when I feel like there's someone that is resenting me or angry at me, it, it really gets to me. Now, imagine a small population of people who are the epicenter of hyper-focused, obsessive, unrelenting hatred by a good majority of the world. How can you ever expect such a people to, to be normal, to, to have ordinary lives? Well, our brothers in Judea and Samaria, they don't lead ordinary lives, they lead extraordinary lives. You know, Anyone who's been there before can testify to the truth that when you go to this region, when you go to these places, the, the love and the community and the generosity, the volunteerism, you know, it transcends just their little community. 
It's the entire country. It's the entire nation. When you think about the, the wildly disproportionate ratio of uh, combat officers that are from Judea and Samaria to the rest of the country, it, it's, it, what, it's, what is it? Do you know five or six times the amount? And these are combat soldiers that are volunteering. They want to be officers. They want to be there. But it's not only the people that make this region so incredible. The terrain, the land, the earth, the air, there's something about it. It'll bring tears to your eyes. The, the olive groves, the vineyards, the knowledge that this land is exactly where our forefathers lived, exactly as we're living there today. It's beyond. And Jeremy and I are sitting here talking and wondering, why isn't the world covering this? Why isn't the world seeing any of this? You, you go to, to YouTube, you turn on the TV, you see these promotional videos for Bermuda, for Hawaii. Why don't you see anything for Samaria? What does Bermuda have on Samaria? <laughs> what, what about Hawaii? The place is a dump. You couldn't even pay me to go there. And I challenge any of you to test my resolve on that. <laughs> So Jeremy and I decided that while ideally we want to bring the entire world to Samaria, we realize that's not a plausible reality right now. So in that case, we decided to bring Samaria to the world. Enjoy. Behold, days are coming when I will return the captivity of my people Israel, and they will build cities, and they will settle, and they will plant vineyards and drink from their wine. I will place them on their land, and they will not be removed ever again. Zionism, our uh, national movement of return, to return to our land, is all based on our history, on the Bible, on the area that our fathers walked. Living here in the Sharon, we are fulfilling the prophecy. We are living out the essence of Zionism. I think the most inspiring thing is to look around you and you feel like you're a part of the Jewish story. Every piece of land, everywhere you walk, history comes alive. Behind me is where the tabernacle stood for almost 400 years. Breathing this air and standing on this land you feel the connection, not only to your father and his father before him, but all the way back throughout Jewish history. Shechem, Shiloh, Beit El, Jerusalem, Hebron, Beit Lechem, all of the activities in the Bible all occurred here in, in the Shamron and in Judea. I live up on this top hill on the left uh, house, and the most amazing story is that when we came to live and we started to dig and build the house, we found many ancient broken pieces of, uh, of dishes of clay from the time that the people of Israel used to come three times a year to visit the tabernacle in Shiloh. We thought we are the first to be here and suddenly we found out that 3,000 years ago, hundreds of thousands of Jews, our ancestors, were coming here three times a year spreading all over those mountain tops and eating the sacrifice. The beauty of the Shomron is unparalleled. The fusion of nature and urban, city and natural comes together in ways almost unseen in all of Israel. In the hills of Samaria, we are not only at this moment in time, but we're transcending it all together. The authentic Jewish life has always been connected to agriculture, always connected to the land of Israel. And now as the Jews are now settling these hills of Samaria, there are over 1,000 dunams of olive trees, of vineyards, that are now producing fruits for the first time in 2,000 years. Making wine today, there's no difference making wine today than the same way that Noach made wine, or Avram Avinu made wine, or Rashi made wine. We take natural grapes for wine. After fermentation, it turns into alcohol, and there is nothing new. We do the same thing here like we did thousands of years ago. When looking at the terrain of Samaria, you'll see a ton of rocks and boulders, and then from these dry, barren rocks, trees, vegetation, flowers, beauty, all of the earth is now coming to life again. 
as a non-Jew, the reason why it's uh, so important for me to be here in the hills of Samaria is because uh, so much of, um, of this land has a history behind it. So much of the uh, biblical prophecy is fulfilled uh, all around us, and it's just amazing to take part of it and to support the, the Jewish people uh, in what we're doing here. Samaria is home to over 80 cities and communities with more than 100 educational institutions, a world-class university in Ariel, boutique wineries, organic and conventional farms, a wide range of industries, and a cross-section of professionals that represent the best in Israel today. In the Ariel University Center, we have 24 academic departments in four faculties from secular to non-secular, from Arab students to Jewish students. The 12,000 students are coming from all the parts of Israel. Only 15%, one five, are coming from Somalia and Judea. I'm the dean of the Faculty of Engineering, and I'm responsible to this monster. This machine is a free electron laser. This is the only machine in Israel, and the only one in the Middle East. The mood here in the campus is very, very good. Students very, very like to study here. They like the, their teachers, and also they like the science. The foundation of Judaism has always been education. In almost every community in the Shamron, there are institutions that are teaching boys, girls, men, women, academic, higher Torah education. It's important for people to realize that in our communities, the so-called Jewish settlements, in the Samaria represent all parts of Israeli society. Actually, the majority of the residents in the Shimon region are secular Israelis. Everything about uh, Samaria was special for us. We are non-religious people, yet we came because we wanted uh, to change our place of living. We wanted a place that we can uh, teach our children the, um, the Jewish heritage, to teach them about uh, Israel, about uh, the right place to live in. That's a great part of Zionism, of our national unity, all being together here and settling the land of Israel. Understanding the strategic importance of Samaria is key. Only 44 miles separate between the Jordan Valley and the Mediterranean Sea. Samaria is also a mountain ridge that reaches over 3,000 feet high and dominates Israel's coastal cities, where 70% of its population 80% of Israel's industry, and all of its airfields and seaports are located. If Israel were to withdraw from Samaria, the country's width would be narrowed to a mere nine miles, which all analysts say is indefensible borders. Samaria, where Jewish history meets Jewish destiny, where biblical prophecy meets reality, where the Jewish people became a nation again. I once heard from a Haaretz reporter that there's no demographic in Israel that's been demonized like the settler movement. And yet at the same time, there's no demographic in the country that is as loyal to the state of Israel. Next week, join us as we meet the head of the settler movement, the head of the Council of Judea and Samaria, Naftali Bennett. Shalom from Jerusalem. All right, this next song is called Mode. We say it every morning. And it's about being a soul, not about being a body. It's about being something greater. So listen up. Yeah. Welcome to the next episode, Jaws. Ah. Pick it up. I wanna say the king for a song of my soul. In the morning when the sun is yawning. The king for a song of my soul. The song of my soul. Pretend is me who rocks and is your mental. It's 
sentimental And send the those that are caught us by what hope and stands his hand to Oh, I better bet you In the next is neck from death He does come to protect you Without the question He's gonna catch you, bless you, dress you Take the next step, bless you, bless you Yeah. 